So today, I will uh, tell a little story, I guess get into a little bit of my childhood, early upbringing, talking about my sister. I've got one sibling, and that is a younger sister, eight years younger than me. She's, um, let's see, she is 27 right now at this point. We have no relationship whatsoever. And... Um, although I'll put, you know, my sister just in the title of the video as a main focus, this video is really also mainly about, um, alienation inside of the home, alienation from a sibling, um, having an alienator parent, which is most likely a mother in anybody's case. And in my case, it was, uh, I didn't even realize until I'm able to, you know, as more time goes on I look at the bigger picture and I become wiser, I can, you know, reanalyze things and like anybody reading a book for a second or third time or for movie watchers to watch a movie again after 10 years or something. And, um, to learn more and more about what what really happened in the past and explain better what's going on today um yeah so i was eight years old when my sister was born um my parents were still married we both we have the same mother and father and the good thing that my sister did for me um, when we were kids is, which I I, I see as having a, a an interesting impact on my life now as a father to four daughters. And that is me being eight years old when my sister was born, before our parents split up, she made it to about four years old um, I had about four years with her and, and that was it. I mean, but during that time, her being born, um, I remember spending as much time with her as possible. Um, and I, I think that maybe solidified or helped, you know, as a good connection with what became my future having daughters. Um, loving my little sister. I was, you know, an only child up until eight. Um, thought I was always going to be an only child at that point. My parents were trying to have more children. There was one in between, um, at least, or two times that my mother got pregnant and had miscarriages. Um, some stories about that I'll tell in other videos in the future but you know finally my sister comes around I was born in 89 my sister was born in 97 um, I've talked about some of the numbers before that are interesting my sister's birthday is 7 9 of 97 and she was born 97 days after my mother's birthday. Interesting. I've talked about it briefly a few times with my kids. My kids have a lot of very interesting numbers like that, but I remember when she, my sister was on the way and my parents were thinking about names and my mother's friend Wendy, it was uh, my parents' friends, Wendy and Brad, another married couple, um, that we visited, as far as I remember, a handful of times when I was a kid. Um, I didn't usually always see very many other kids, and, and this couple had um, two daughters in their home. They had an older son, um, but it was the two daughters that were around when we hung out and one of them's name was Aaron, Aaron and Tyla. Um, 
I liked their names a lot, and I liked Aaron. It just it wasn't that I you know liked one of those um, sisters more than the other one, but it was just the name Aaron that I liked a lot. And so my parents were picking names. Um, I was pretty strong on telling them, even at that young age like that, like it, her middle name should be Aaron. They were gonna name her Hallie, and then they went with Haley, and then. Um, I had pushed on that middle name, Aaron, E-R-I-N. -E um, which is where that name, that name has kind of been a part of my life, especially focusing on 9-11 so much that a hurricane that was present on 9-11 was Hurricane Aaron spelled the same way. So, but anyways, um, that's how her middle name came about. It was really um, me pushing on that to get them to do it, and they did it. But those first four years, um, I spent a lot of time with her. I loved being around her. I loved hanging out with her as a newborn baby. I was so excited. I was just such an excited little boy to have a little sibling, brother or sister. And I had a sister. Um, I remember as far as my dad, it helped change him in a way you know, he, he was definitely a guy super excited to have a son. Um, and I wasn't living up to a lot of things that he wanted me to do back then. But aside from a lot of other people out there, I think that it didn't bother me that much as a little boy. Like, in fact, I did a lot of things just, just to make my dad feel better, you know. Um, but uh, some examples would be, he want, you know, trying to teach me how to surf, and like I, I could not handle it at a young age. He wasn't really that great of a teacher either, but you know, some of those things would get him frustrated, or you know, he wanted me to be a super athlete, like a lot of dads do. But uh, he didn't know how to focus on nutrition so much, and I was just naturally a super skinny kid. Still got the fast metabolism today, and so some of those things I remember frustrated him a little bit doesn't make him a horrible guy but having a little girl just got him wrapped around her finger and I never had any jealousy issues with that I was always cool with it you know I mean I loved her just as much so um you know we were both equally excited to, to have her in the family which is great and uh we had a which I guess is getting more and more rare these days but we had a a big backyard plenty of room to play and it actually you know before we even really made it out there so much was um I remember teaching her how to walk I would just it was me focusing on that you know and helping her and I, I even remember to this day I put on these little white sandals with flat feet on them that helped her stand up a little stabilize a little bit better and I remember I helped give her those at first to, to help her start walking and she started walking. And so I witnessed her first steps, just as I have with all four of my daughters. And um, one, of my, one of my favorite memories with her was just hanging out in our backyard in the summertime, you know, dragging the hose all over the place and making the dirt into mud out there. And, um, you know, being silly, I, I I don't know why I remember this one so clearly, but just drawing a big old mud happy face on her belly. Big old, she's a chunky little girl. Um, those were fun times, and I loved being around her so much. And I was very protective of her. And just like I see, you know, with my kids, they're closer in age, so they butt heads a little bit more, but they, they love and take care of each other a lot. So I love to see that, especially I see it so much in my oldest inside of my home, um, Salem. She's four, the other two are three and two. They're very close in age, and Salem's just so much like me. All my kids are so much like me. But Salem loves being a big sister, and I know that my oldest, who I haven't seen in five years, sadly, which I'll get into in some of the stories my sister's involved with that. I know my oldest is, is just the same and she she wants and she needs and should be around her little sister. She hasn't even met them yet. Um, and this is all related to the story, you know, with my sister and my mother. 
but my point is my oldest would be just as wonderful you know with some little siblings and um it's not fair to her i know she wants to be around her little sisters so bad and her mom doesn't let her do that so just terrible but um when my sister was four and i was 12 our parents split up and my mother had already been dating um, she's the type of woman which most women are a lot of women are they got the next guy in their back pocket to jump ship to um, you know when they're ready for a divorce so my mother had already my mother was already had already moved in with the next guy before she had even finalized her divorce and this guy was a big opposite of my father my dad although he had plenty of his mistakes uh plenty of problems um he was a fit athletic dude good looking guy and the guy my mom married after that was just a beach ball belly fat bastard jealous as fuck of my father and um I'm sure he had the self-confidence as, as far as beating his own insecurities concerning my father and that um, he held a job, was doing good at his job, the same job for many years. It's something my father couldn't hold on to or figure out. Um, for whatever reasons, I, I don't know. Um, but surface value, you know, being a good looking guy, being, being a, a guy in good shape, um, stepfather hated that and so my stepfather had three kids a son and two daughters <clears throat> I was older than all three of them I was about three years older than his son and then from his son it went down to two younger sisters and so when my mom married this guy well the guy wanted his son to be the leader of the show and the star of the show and his son to be the only son basically so um i faced issues with that right away and in splitting up and my mother being an alienator herself um and in her case telling me too many things as a, as a little boy before they split up for years you know treating me like i was her friend more than her son bringing me in on conversations she should have never brought me in on, sharing with me things about my dad she should have never done, whether he was right or wrong for doing stuff that he did. Um, my mother is just an immature parent, uh, you know, concerning that stuff, sharing too much with me, which what it does is, um, one term I've heard before, which I agree with, is it's an emotional incest, you know, with your child to, to treat to treat them like they're some type of adult or friend and all of your you know way too detailed stories and conversations someone that you can lean on and talk to about things should have never done that and then that in itself is alienating you know between me and my father and yeah. my point of view should always encourage the best picture of a child's parent that you can help um, create and maintain even if the other parent is not such a great parent, it's important for the child's mental health to have a positive picture of their parent and a good explanation um, and pro res mental resource and process to think of their parent so it doesn't downgrade the kid's life. So my mother never understood that. Mosquito flying around in here. That was the alienation that went on in our house for a long time before they got divorced. And... And then, you know, I spent more one-on-one -on -one time with my little sister than either one of my parents did. And then splitting up, instead of being able to co-parent without a courthouse, which is very rare, um, it's no matter who you are, if you're a parent that can't figure that out, that you're immature, um, or one of the parents is, because, you know, one of, it's... Uh, mostly the women but one of the parents at least will want to go to the court and that was again that was my mother had to get a court order um taking us to a police station for drop-offs and her husband is just a fat simp 
um, playing it off and talking around me too much, like if there was going to be an issue with the drop-offs and pickups and things, acting like my father was just going to be some violent person with everybody was just ridiculous. Even still, even before they split up, my mother used to brag sometimes to me, a little boy, about putting Benadryl in his milk for dinner to make him go to sleep, which is illegal and um, just wrong. Um, when they got married, what they did was, for all the years that, see, I lived from 12 years old, See, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I, shit, it was just a few short years for me so, till, till the age of 16. 16. I had already... My mother actually had allowed me to move out of their house and into an uncle's house, which was a horrible atmosphere for me to be in. And um, weird alienation in itself there. My father passed away when I was 16. It was after that, that year. So my grades went out the window in school. Um, and I went to this uncle's house where he, this uncle of mine was just moron, smoking cigarettes and drinking beer with his kids when they were in junior high and high school age. And um, oftentimes it, all of us were skipping school, smoking weed all day, smoking cigarettes all day, drinking beer and hard alcohol. Um, a retarded place to be, you know. And they're a family, they love each other, you know, they're they're a close-knit family to this day. Um, but extremely unhealthy and just retarded as far as being a parent and, and a lifestyle. But my mother wanted to be in her own bubble with her marriage and have me out of it. Because I was just um, inconvenient to their relationship and uh, in the way of their relationship. And then her husband, you know, wanted to pretend like his son was the only son in the house. And that guy's even upset with his son on the other end of the spectrum, being a little fat boy himself and not really good at anything. Um, but in that household, me and my sister, as soon as that relationship started, me and my sister's lives together were over, directly in that house. Um, my mother gave no importance for us to keeping a relationship together. She didn't give a shit. Um, she was really more into playing the role of the other guy's kid's mother. Their mother, who had committed suicide, um, I think she was dealing with postpartum depression. These kids were born all back to back to back pretty close, but then this guy was just such a weirdo asshole and would say some of the weirdest, darkest things um, behind behind the scenes to people. I know that because of what I've seen him say to me or anybody else in our house. Um, that his wife ended up shooting herself and you know my mom comes and plays savior to the household and is willing to do anything for this guy. And I remember how weird shit was. Even when I was 12, my sister was four, and we would go, you know, meet this guy and his kids at a restaurant. And it started pissing me off. We were sitting, I was sitting at the table across from my little sister. And that, even then, physically, I'm across from my sister. And the guy's son, who's three years younger than me at the time, so he must have been about nine or ten, is grabbing on my little sister's cheeks and stuff. Eee, at the table. Eee. And I was just looking at him like, it's too much. I said, keep your hands off my sister. And um, I was ready to just beat the shit out of him, even at a young age then. What a fucking fat weirdo. And I was, like, punished, you know, for even talking like that or even saying anything about it, you know, or even being protective in that way. So that was just some of those weird things going on right in the beginning. But in the house, so they put all three of the girls, my little sister and the other two stepsisters, in a room together. And then me in my own room and the boy in his own room. And anything, any activities that went on at the house, it was always the girls by themselves and the boys by themselves. And then I wasn't even ever really welcome with the stepbrother and stepfather. I mean, if, if we were together doing anything, um, I was the opposition in all of those scenarios. Here's an example for something the weird stepfather would say. Things to me, 
trying to like gaslight me into leading a certain direction and a failure in life to say, hey, you know, well, there's five kids in this house. The odds are one of them is going to be a drug addict. That's just the way things go. And he would kind of just try and put that into my head uh, as, a, as a kid, which is fucking psychotic. Um, I remember one other time after we lived together for a couple of years too, the, the step siblings were doing something. Um, it's the boy messing around with my sister again in the backyard and I ended up punching him in the stomach over it and then the stepdad acted like he was going to kill me over that you know just weird shit my mother never stood up for anything and so yeah inside of that house we were split apart from each other never spent any time with each other um and I don't blame myself at being a kid you know if I if I, what I wish I would have done, though, is really stayed laser focused on keeping close with my sister. Um, back then, I wish I would have done that more. But the thing is, is I did care and I did try. And I was just basically sabotaged out of that. Manipulated out of that. Physically separated out of that inside of that home. Um, to a major failure of my mom. You know, and the psychopathic fucking fat ass retard that was my stepfather. So that's just, you know, it's sad. It's alienation just inside of the home on top of being alienated from my father. And during those years, I was under the impression that I should hate my father in a lot of ways. Um, luckily for me, though, I was smart enough to still want a relationship with my father and it would be kind of off and on. But where all the power is in parents or step parents in any split family is it's your job as a parent to make sure that your kids have a good relationship with their other parent. And I, I blame my mother so much for um, never talking me through that as a kid. And in fact, it was just like, ah, well, we'll just encourage the opposite, you know, encourage conflict. Um, you know, that's a sad deal. And then my father ended up passing by the time I was 16. So really sad so that makes my sister eight years old when he passed and I was at the hospital the VA the Veterans Hospital in Los Angeles just a, a pile of shit institution there um, and my, my sister was with my grandparents in Ventura while me and my mother and, you know, all other older family, my dad's sisters and um, some of, um, you know, his mother and his father were still alive at the time. We're all at the hospital. He had cancer for a few years and man, if I ever get cancer, I'm never taking chemo or any bullshit from anybody. Unfortunately, my father was taking some of that stuff and it was wrecking him and they were doing some experimental drug with him out of U, uh, USC. Um, which I think is what ended up giving him a tumor. So the last time I saw my dad, he couldn't even talk. He was in a, um, he could open his eyes and he could squeeze my hands. We went to that hospital. I guess I mean, he was just basically on his way out very quickly the last time I saw him. We were in Bakersfield. You know, my mom got the call from my dad's girlfriend, which luckily that there was that was even possible. That hey, he's not doing good. He's unresponsive. He just went from Ventura to L.A. in a hospital in a um, in an ambulance. And so we went out there on a Friday, spent the day, and he passed away by Saturday morning. My little sister was too young to be there and see any of that. Um, which. Again, now that I think of it, I'm discovering right here on this video that, you know, my mom, sh my mom should have had my eight, my sister there, you know, for my father, because I mean, he was laying in a hospital bed. He didn't look really all that terrible. He didn't look great, but for him being alone without seeing his little girl, I can imagine right now in this moment, all he could do is open his eyes and he could hear what we were saying. And they did not bring his daughter to him in there. Man, I hate that. You know, for him. So, she wasn't. I remember then after he'd passed away, there's plenty of stories to go into for that story for another video. But when we went back to Ventura where my sister was at, it was me and my mother just alone, just the three of us in the backyard let my little sister know that her dad passed away. And eight years old is 
big enough to really understand hit and be hit hard by that. And I know she was. I saw it in her eyes when we told her. It was really sad. Even my kids now, two, three, and four years old, and you know, my three youngest out of four would be devastated if they heard something like that. And so, you know, my heart still breaks for my sister dealing with that at eight years old, but it's the problem with growing up without having a very close relationship with your father, whether he's been alienated from a split family, divorce court, you know, family law, or, um, or and on top of that, passing away at a young age. So what I've seen over these past few years, really looking around and listening now that I'm aware, is that single mother homes are wrecking the world. Single mother homes are creating all the drug addicts, um, all the prison inmates, all the suicides, all the crime. And so from a social engineering point of view, I've learned that that is the um, invisible warfare, the silent warfare, the irregular warfare that the country's facing about removing fathers. You get fathers out of everybody's lives and everybody's life goes to shit. And it's not even so much that mothers are such bad parents. Um, the lack of the leadership from a strong male father figure missing is a huge deal. Plus, what are moms doing? What are single moms doing? Well, they're so self-interested. They need to go date. They need to go date. They need to spend time going out. They need to put the kid in public school and daycare and babysitters. So really the time with the child goes out the window as I fully firmly believe that women who are mothers, not the ones who don't want to be mothers and do whatever they want, you know, with their life, but the ones who are mothers should be home with their children and taking care of their house, their home and their family at home, not working any type of a career. Disagree with that if you want. This is, uh, you know, this is my channel and I can't get interrupted here in this video, but that's my belief. Because the time with the children is more important than that second income or that whatever you know stupid fucking career women think that they want to work giving up on motherhood is the biggest trick on women in the history of mankind and i'll tell you too in fact fathers are uh, envious and you know if i could and i could just be at home with my kids all day and have that I, I wish that so many of us fathers do wish that and we make the sacrifice to be the ones to deal with the stress of figuring out the world, putting your hands on in the world and being a part of the community and uh, building something and bringing something home to, to keep a family strong, safe and secure. And so what that did, and my mother ended up divorcing this guy too. My mom's been married fucking five times. Is my sister grew up without a father and she's facing Plenty of issues from growing up that way. And after they had split up, my sister's, um, you know, getting up to 18, 19 years old. I back up a little bit. So by the time my sister's getting into junior high, I have already had my first child and split up with her mother and I'm facing family court, child support, false accusations of domestic violence. And the, the time and the event that I was charged with domestic violence, my sister was there and witnessed the whole thing. And she didn't come forward and say anything about the story, about what happened, or come to my defense at all. In fact, it was a plot between my sister, my mother, and my ex to do anything and everything they could to make me homeless, get me in jail. And so that's what they worked together to do. Um, and I don't, I wouldn't ever solely blame my sister for any of that, especially she was only in junior high at the time, about 13 years old. Um, wasn't her fault, but surely, you know, she was there. She saw the whole thing. And that's another thing. I'm going to talk about that actual event and the police report and stuff from that day in another video sometime. Um, but she witnessed the whole thing and 
witnessed that I did not hurt my child's mother whatsoever. And it's sad to have seen like at that point where they were just like, oh, well, we're gonna get him out of here anyway. So let's just go ahead and get him in jail if possible and put him away if we can. We don't want him anywhere around here. Terrible. Um, you know, what's interesting too is I, it's not so important that it's on camera, but it would be interesting just to save the record to be able to sit down with my sister and talk about that event that day on camera and have her explain what she saw and then go over the actual uh, police report that was filed by my kid's mother and see how well those two things match up, which they wouldn't at all. Um, to prove my innocence on that issue and but that will never happen my sister doesn't give a shit about it um unfortunately but that was a big life changer for me as far as me and my relationship with my sister i remember going through that at the time and my mother is a pathological liar I asked her years later and she gave me a different answer. But at the time when I had a public defender, I was telling the guy when I met him in his office, I was like, well, my, my sister was there and saw the whole thing. Why can't we we'll just go talk to her and have this thing solved? And it could have been him that lied as well, but I 90% I put it on my mother that is the liar that uh, the guy told me. He's like, yeah, well, I was able to get a hold of them and spoke to uh, your mom and your sister and your sister said that you did hit your kid's mother. And, um, man, that stabbed me in the chest too. Back at the time, I thought, what in the hell is going on that they would say and do something like that? There is a chance the guy could have just said that. I mean, because even those public defenders want to just tack on there. They're working with those little DAs in there and stuff. Um, working the system, aiming to get charges on people. My mother told me years later, like almost 10 years later, that the guy never talked to them. But I don't believe her. My mom lies. My mom lies so bad about so many, so many things. I mean, literally a pathological liar. So that was, that's a weird experience, you know, to go through in my own immediate family to realize that that is like the last zone of defense, the last line of defense for anybody is, you know, your last main most natural circle of life in your own immediate family and mine was non-existent um but nothing i dwell on as far as my sister i don't blame her for all of that um that just is what it is there and then by the time my sister's in high school and I was about 25 at the time, 2015, 25, about to turn 26. My sister was the only one that could have known anything about me smoking weed at the time. And I didn't even smoke much at the time. I used to, I was given like a, a half ounce after half, helping a friend of mine and their family trim a bunch of plants. They gave me like a half ounce as a gift, you know, for, for, for doing that and making some money on, on the side. It was just a one weekend type of a job thing. I didn't even touch it because I was working on getting different jobs and, and going through so many of the things that I did back then, homelessness and a bunch of shit. Um, at one point I, I just got tired of waiting around for months and I went out to a dirt biking trip with a buddy of mine and we smoked a couple of joints between me and him and his girlfriend he had at the time hanging out out there in the desert for the weekend had a great weekend and at home the only thing i had done with that weed that was given to me was i would i'd take a little bit and i'd put it in the end of my cigarette because i smoked cigarettes at the time unfortunately thank god i gave that up really soon after that a long time ago i only smoked cigarettes for a couple of years retarded but i would do that out back of the house when i stayed at my mother's house again briefly just for a couple of months the only time i had ever gone back there really to live with them for very for very long at all 
My mother did, or my sister didn't want me around there. She wanted any of my mother's resources or home to be hers and their space and me to be out of there. Unfortunately, that's how my sister saw me at that time. It would have been, would have been the only one to know or say anything about me smoking any weed around their house because her window was just by, behind the back of the house back there. So she had gone, her and my mother had gone and told my kid's mother to, again, worked all together to go file to have an ex party filed against me to take away all of my time with my daughter and put me on supervised visits and, and have me do a drug test. Terrible. I told this story before in the Diabolical Mothers video, if you want to connect them. That was probably almost a year ago I did that one, but pretty sick of my mother and my sister to do that to me again then. And now as far as weed being legal or not even really be a pro being a problem for any parent to smoke in the first place anyway, they put me on supervised visits over that which is, is disgusting. Um, you know, my daughter doesn't even realize that now, but she'll learn that in the future and be able to analyze that for herself that, that they would even do that. So just backstabbing, you know, his relationship is where my sister headed, you know, as she went into adulthood, which is, which is odd because by the time my sister was the same age and had her son at, I think she was at 21 or no, no, no. Let's see. Let's see. Her son is a shit. Yeah. Her son is, yeah, she was about 21 at the time when she had him. And so opposite of that, my sister's kid's dad, when they live together, because of course she doesn't know what a father is or how to have a husband or anything like that at all. It has no value for her son's father or even how to pick one because that guy's a fucking jackass. Um, my mother had both of them living with her and helped them grow marijuana plants at my mother's house. So my sister was the same age and had a little boy. That's the difference in the treatment that I got from my mother compared to the way my mother treated my sister. Not to mention kicking me out all the time or leave, leaving me with no help whatsoever. I was homeless. Uh, first time I was homeless, I was 22 and I've been homeless four or five times in my life. My sister's always got a place to live with my mother at her house. Um, pampered, babied her whole life. She still lives with her now to this day, 27. Um, that's the difference in treatment between men and women. And I got it right there inside of my own family. It's not like we're a close family at all. But my mother actually helped her grow weed at the house when they had a small child. And my sister was about the same age as when I got put on supervised visits for it. Psychotic. Um, fucking psychotic. Even as bad as my mother, as I said in that other video I mentioned. That year when I got put on the supervised visits for that, I turned everything around real quick. Didn't touch weed passed a drug test, um, went and fixed my issues at the time, which they all fell off within the same two weeks, driver's license, car registration, um, and my cell phone bill, which is kind of how they took me to court and said, oh, he doesn't have any of this stuff, and he's got, and he's on drugs was how they, was how they worded it. I fixed all that, was in another place to live, and um, got a job, fixed all of my stuff on my own, and then, and then, then they had no excuse to say I didn't have any of that stuff anymore. So what my mother did after that was gave my kid's mom five grand to get an attorney because I went and took out my own loan to get an attorney to go to court. I was the first one that got an attorney in my family law case. And, and since my mother, fucking dumb troll ass, didn't have an excuse anymore at the time, she said, oh shit, okay, well, I'm going to give you five grand for an attorney so you can go fight again. My own mother did that. So this is pretty common. And we're going to see a hell of a lot more of it um, in the decades to come because all these young women that grew up without fathers in their homes and they alienated their own kids from their fathers and then when their kids are adults and the way that they're going to be treating their sons and the same thing is a hell of a lot of sabotage so that's how you break down a nation and so yeah she's highly involved with a lot of that um, and that's where we've led today and I remember when my my sisters was was pregnant with her son and I, I have been so frustrated going through so much contempt of court and bullshit. Uh, I, I've been in, in I've been in the family court over 60 times. I would say over 70, maybe even fucking closer to 100. I don't know. I'm going to have to count them all out again. I counted them one time and I got over 50. Um, so stressed out back then and having my own kid kidnapped for me over and over again. And my sister was just always a part of it there with my mother. Even on days, say like it was Easter one time or my daughter's birthday and it actually fell on my day for custody. 
my mom would have my daughter at her house that day, they would take her and leave so I couldn't even show up and get my kid on my own. They didn't give a shit because they never enforced it. The fucking pig police don't give a fuck about enforcing father's rights. Um, no, neither does the courthouse. And so, so frustrated one time I said, I, I hope you fucking lose your kid, you know, which is a terrible thing to say. Her faggot boyfriend um, was so bothered by that. He never wanted me to be around their son after that. Another part of the story, just about a year ago, seeing them split up, and even though he's a dumbass, I mean, just a straight retard, um, I saw them headed towards custody battle, and I thought, after everything I've been through, I still reached out to the guy, and I said, hey, man, basically, I, you know, I'm not gonna put up with my mother and sister alienating you from your son, and I may not have that much of my foot in the door on, on their side, but anything I can do to help you and make sure you see your son, I'm gonna help you with. And he's such a fucking, such a fucking retard that um, he messaged me back and said I owe him an apology for what I said. Fine, fair enough, kind of a weird thing to say, but being the bigger person at the time, I would say, yeah, sure, I remember what you were so upset about. I shouldn't have said that. Well, because those are people I care about and people I love, which is a weird, stupid, faggot thing to say. From a guy that was asking my mother for money all the time and then taking that money and asking other chicks to send him nudes. I think before even OnlyFans got here, I'm sure he's got full of OnlyFans accounts now, but he would message girls and ask them to send him pictures with the money that my mother gave them to take care of their family. But he wanted to pretend like I owed him some sort of an apology. Oddly enough, too, with the domestic violence stuff, I had heard about a domestic violence incident going on with my sister and him in front of my um, mother's family. And my mother's family just thinks I'm a piece of shit because of what my mother says about me to them for years and years after years after years. So again, my mother alienated from me from her entire side of the family. Lies and lies and lies. And I don't give a shit about any of them at this point because none of them ever... None of them ever gave a fuck to talk to me about that back then. And there's only two that I reached out to. My mom's brother, Kevin, and my mom's father. Neither one of them gave a shit. Kevin's a little baby boy that grew up uh, pampered as fuck too. Has no real life experience or perspective on what a split family is. Or what I was going through. What false allegations are. Uh, and he's lucky he didn't have to go through that. None of them gave a fuck. And then they witnessed my six, my sister actually go through some type of problem. And then my, my, um, which is sad, you know, too, because I, I really love this family, Kevin, my uncle Kevin. And, um, I looked up to him so much as a kid, more than he ever knew, but they would still spend time with my sister and there was some type of event that took place and his daughter was like ready to beat my sister's son's father my sister's ex you know was ready to beat him up because of what they went through did they call the police on him no they didn't ever do any of that shit which is which is blows my mind i don't know weird setup um and then you know my mother taking care of my daughter i mean my of my sister all these years is to this day, my sister, every other weekend's going out of town, going to EDC type of trips and fucking concerts, uh, taking all kinds of fucking drugs to go to these concerts. My mother didn't give a shit about putting her on supervised visits or being on any type of drug test. In fact, my mom just babysitted her son for her so she could go out all these places every weekend, year after year after year. And before my sister was even 21, she was doing this. In fact, that year, that year, 2015, I think it was later on that year, my sister was already at one of these festivals with weed with weed leaves all over her shit, her clothes. Um, double standard, counterintuitive, sloppy, sabotaging, alienating, you know, pieces of shit, you know, my mother. And even my sister taking part of that and then going off and doing it herself. Because really it was just a plot to fight against me. Not that... I was really any type of a problem to my daughter. And that's really none of these other people ever should have fucking mattered, you know? A father's relationship with his kids doesn't have shit to do with anybody else. That's all I ever wanted was to see my daughter. 
plenty of more stories to come from that but that's so that's what i've um experienced you know from my poor sister growing up she's she just still has no perspective on life to this day and during some of those years to wrap this video up in the last couple of stories i have in my interactions with my sister is right around the time i was charged with domestic violence back then which is part of which is a weird sad thing a sad reason for my sister to, to not like me or want to listen to me or be around me back then was she was in junior high my mom was letting her stay home from school from school all the time being sick anytime she wanted to stay home my mom would just hook her up call the school out. she's sick I remember my sister said something to me oh, I want to be I want to play soccer in college she was on the soccer team there and, and I said well if you're gonna be staying home sick so much you should call the coach yourself and communicate that with the coach not just let the school figure it out um, and this is good advice you know and if you're gonna be sick why not try and get to practice have mom take you to practice sit on the sideline over there and support your team because I had been through high school and played football basketball and baseball saw the importance of that saw the importance of leadership and teamwork and still supporting a team anyways but simply me telling that to my sister at the time anyways made my sister want didn't want anything to do with me didn't want that kind of responsibility or accountability go figure as a female living with the female without a father um, and then a few years after that when I had lived with them briefly I was a uh, I actually I wasn't even living with them yet at the time as I was a tow truck driver and I was seeing all kinds of people go through kinds of you know problems on the side of the road and stuff and I had already learned as a young a young guy on my own how to change a tire my sister was driving and I had offered to her I said hey it was a Saturday I said hey why don't you know tomorrow on Sunday I'll, I'll hang out with you and we can change a tire together out here simply as simple as it went and in the same kitchen at the time my mother butts into the conversation and says don't even talk to her alienating don't even talk to her I mean it was just I was trying to get along with my sister offer some guidance to be there for help and don't even talk to her and then um, yeah and then basically a lot of times I just wasn't even welcome over there simple even even relationships this day or even now if I had said anything to my mother which I've said often over the past couple of years you know bring my sister over have her come hang out with us you know no interest in it because my mother's still a fucking moron and has no value in that whatsoever and keeps an umbrella over her to keep me away from her no guidance no family no making amends because my mother is a fucking moron and by the way where else did this lead my sister ended up having a having a, a son before getting married that relationship's gone and that jackass, you know, my nephew's father's already off, had another kid with somebody else, and I, that relationship probably ain't gonna work out either. And that chick already has a kid with some other person. So there's three kids split between, you know, three different relationships. Um, my sister has no value to offer to a person to be a wife. She doesn't even spend time with her son at this point which is really sad you know she'll work and then spend her weekends going out of town with her friends um, but they put him in public school sad then he goes to daycare sad then they'll just put him in daycare just because they don't want to hang out with him during the day on a weekend or something sad and uh, so now that boy is facing at least he gets to see his father. They're, you know, following some type of agreement, I guess. Even though he, he's, it's not 50-50, as far as I can tell. Um, even if it is, my sister's never spending time with him, which is retarded, sad. And I can see those effects in my nephew as far as his development as a, as a little boy. Just sad, you know, and it's never the kid's fault. But I probably won't have him around my kids very much as they, as they keep getting older because... He's going to be poisoned by society, poisoned by listening to shitty music, watching stupid movies, and, be, and being raised 
by the public school, by the daycare, by random babysitters. You know, all these different places, they're not really getting a one area of resource, which would just be both of their parents. And even for, even for that kid, you know, in the future, if he's ever um, needs help from his uncle, I'm always gonna be there to help him and guide him anyways, you know, without any type of cold shoulder. But I don't know, I don't wish any bad on him. Um, I love him, I care about him very much. But I don't see a promising future ahead. I see, some, I see a lot of difficulty on the way for him, unfortunately, and for my sister. Uh, she's going to be pushing over 30 pretty soon. And as I said, she doesn't have anything to offer to, as being a wife. Um, and I'm really, I'm not trying to just trash on my sister. Um, I love her. I wish I could help her. I wish I could have a relationship with her. But just describing, you know, what happens over the years in a fatherless home, alienation from parents and in between siblings and having no leadership, no guidance, no men in, the, in their life. Because what did my mom do after she divorced the last fat dumbass? She married another fat dumbass. This guy's a drunk. He's an attorney with money, which is what my mom wanted. But he's by fucking, after he gets off at five o'clock or so, he's fucking drunk on the couch and... Um, not even really able to speak or walk by 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m. And they just walk around the house disrespecting and making fun of him for it, too, on top of that. Belittling him. And he's not really, he's not a man. He, that guy had to protect the house. Shit, the other night, some random person who I think was also drunk on the weekend knocked on the wrong door. Could have been trying to break in, though. Uh, that, you know, just a weak little man sleeping in his bed drunk, ain't going to protect nobody. Ain't taught my sister shit. He didn't ever care to have any relationship with me over anything I don't give a fuck about. You know, no examples, no men. Um, my stepfather was, he had a, he, he did have some good qualities. I'll give him that. I'll talk shit about him. He had some good qualities. I learned some good stuff from him. He's responsible in a lot of ways. He's a good father in a lot of ways to his own kids. But he's, he also had some massive fucking psychological problems and I'll still talk shit about him too. But I, I, I am the type of person I still won't, um, I won't go so far as just to be in a bitter way to really just trash him completely. That's my personality. But, um, so that's where, I mean, that's where my sister is today at this age, unfortunately. And I wish her the best. I don't wish any, I don't wish any ill on her or her kid or even her kid's dumbass dad. Hopefully he gets his stuff figured out and grows up, you know. As people do, you know, he's around the same age as her, so he's got some time to keep learning. I'm 35, speaking from my point of view, right? So, when you don't have that example, it, you know, as a kid, it, it leads their lives to a bad place, and then it, 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 puts you in a position to also not even be a good parent or not have much to offer in a relationship to a husband, you know, for my sister, unfortunately. Um, I hope she learns that. I hope she doesn't end up staying alone. You know, I hope she can, you know, find someone uh, that she can get married to and be happy. And, you know, I'll never blame her for the domestic violence stuff that, you know, the, the thing that she witnessed that I was charged for back then, she could have made a big impact and, and helped me out with that by telling the truth not even um would never ask anybody to lie for me for fucking anything and but at the same time i'm i'm I ain't gonna go through the rest of my life blaming it trying to blame her for anything like that the point of this story here today is to is to show you know just the sadness and the separation and alienation that can happen between siblings from an alienating parent you know missing a father in her life and my life and where, how we have ended up where we've ended up in this way. Um, and on top of that, you know, my mom, I, I ain't voting for nobody. Uh, I'm not dumb enough to be a Republican or a Democrat, but my mom, even though she's, um, she, even though she stays strapped all the time, which is, which is great. I like that. Um, and she has a lot of like, kind of, you would think conservative values. She still voted for Joe Biden. <laughs> I remember her voting for her for voting for Clinton back in the day. But to be dumb enough to vote for Joe Biden, goddamn. <laughs> uh, and 
unlike me and my family, none of us were touched by any vaccinations. My, my mother and my sister are both vaxxed and boosted. Fuck, you know, so hopefully that doesn't bring on any heart issues or whatever for them. I hated to see that, but they did it. So that's the reality of life, you know. Even, you know, talking about, um, which I like to consider, you know, maybe a buddy at this point, Zach Hubbard at uh, Gematria, Gematria Effect News. Um, he faces, you know, somewhat separation, as far as I know, just as adults, you know, in points of view on the world or paying attention to the dark forces that are that are controlling the world right now so he's got that kind of a split from his sister and i think she's kind of in the same boat as my mom and my sister something around there i'm not 100 percent sure but it's the reality of what happens as adults and stuff you know even families not talking to each other so uh, anyways it went longer than i thought it would but uh, not surprised a little bit of the story of my sister um To end it on a positive note is some cool things. Um, one of my best friends, Church, he did a tattoo, a memorial tattoo on my sister's side um, for my father. And that means a lot too because it's a picture just kind of a silhouette at the beach, you know, a surfer that signifies my father. I think they put a date on there or something. I can't remember exactly what it looks like. He showed me a picture of it after he did the tattoo. I'd never actually seen it on her. And uh, she's got a bunch of tattoos now. I think one or two sleeves. She's got a fucking neck tattoo and some of these things. I think even on her hands, but I can't remember. But that's cool, you know, for a best friend of mine. Um, who I would completely trust with that. He's an amazing artist. He's been tattooing for a long time. He lost his father about the same age I lost mine. So it's a special thing. That's a cool deal. Um, even though it's all fucked up, you know, I, in so many ways, I'm so proud of my sister for being a mother, for giving birth to a child. That's a, a wonderful thing for a woman to accomplish, experience. Um, I'm proud of her for doing that. Uh, I wish we would have been together more. Um, I hope we have a promising future. I don't care if she sees this or not. You know, typically the less intelligent can't take um, somebody else's point of view without getting extremely butt hurt and being able to keep in a relationship anyways. But I don't care if her or anybody sees this. But um, I had to fix that. So a call just came through using a phone. But, uh, might come through again but might hit a couple of times using my wife's phone for this because my phone's all full and then her grandmother keeps trying to call through so she's probably going to keep trying to call back but let's see how many times we get cut off here one time i got to take my sister i used to be a skater for a couple years and i took her to a skate park that i used to go to she was I think this was before junior high it was unfortunate because like it was just me and her out there in the morning and uh this skate park beach park in bakersfield california is always full of so many kids out there no helmet no pads whatsoever i mean hundreds of them every day and the one day we were there earlier in the morning before all these little kids even get up because i knew when to go there we're having a good time skateboarding she has a helmet and pads on i don't and some fucking pussy bicycle cop comes over and gives me a ticket hanging out with my sister. Gives me a ticket for not having a helmet. What a bitch. This is the most pussy thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, it was a little weird thing to do. A little fat fucking boy. Fag boy. Chubby tubby fat cop on a bicycle. What a worthless piece of shit. Anyways, that was a fun time with my sister before that dumbass came over and bothered us and, and lastly um, I got a picture I'll share maybe I'll share a couple of them here at the end of uh, I can edit them into this video to close it out but
I think I was just around about junior high myself or a little bit older, maybe early high school. I think getting out of eighth grade. I remember we were in red. I got to find this picture. I think it might be in my phone. Place my dad used to like to take us up on the hill in Ventura. There's a place you can go up behind downtown up on the mountain a little bit where the cross is. And some of those roads up there, there's a couple other cool spots you can pull over and get an over, overlooking bird's eye view of the coastline and the pier. I remember the day, and that'll probably be one of my best memories with me and my sister and my dad, is that picture that we took together. My dad took that picture, and my sister is up on the guardrail of the little turnout there and I'm standing next to her I'm standing on the street and holding on to her about hip level she's I think she's throwing up the peace sign super cute um, good memory but anyways just some stories to share with you guys here about life family, alienation, sibling, relationship. Some people might think I'm an asshole the way I talk about some of this. I don't, I don't care. Um, I know that I'm not. I love her. I want the best for her. And um, I hope we can make some kind of relationship in the future. Not promising. I don't know. Especially with the way things are going these days for way people are behaving or women are behaving it's unfortunate but that's what it is maybe anybody watching this can take something from it and make a change in your life before something ever happens that before it's too late um i hope i hope that it brought some kind of value or maybe helped you remember or be grateful for something in your life a little bit about my experience with my one and only sibling I don't keep in touch with any of those step siblings I had. None of us do. So it was just me and her. That's a little story about my sister. So thanks for watching. You guys like the video if you like it. Um, share the video with anybody you think it will help. As with always on this channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell. Get some notifications for future videos. And um, <clears throat> you can always reach out to me. Say something in the comments. Um, or send me a direct message on Instagram. And I think my website might be down right now, but we'll get it back up. Just been super broke lately. You can always go to my website and direct me, directly contact me through there. Hit some of the links I put below some of these videos um, to get any kind of coaching from me, which involves foundation of fitness, health. It's weightlifting is what it is, basically personal training online. Um, nutrition options, workout program, accountability for that, weekly meetings on Zoom, in a group or one-on-one -on -one setting or both. And mainly my biggest value beyond um, fitness, fitness and personal training and meal planning is, you know, helping you as a father or a mother, um, getting through your family issues inside of the home or outside of the home or custody battle or you know your visitation pickups and things like that keeping a good mindset through that and avoiding mistakes that i made that's what i can help with that's a that's something i can be present on the social media platforms for and help people out with and do a good job so thanks for watching you guys appreciate it we'll see you on the next one